centuries, there was harmony. The Titans were the guardians of nature, and the great apes became the protectors of humanity. The MonsterVerse continues with Godzilla and Kong The New Empire, one of a few new movies I'll be reviewing this week on CJ at the Movies, along with some new films starring Liam Neeson and Russell Crowe, a talk show gone hellishly wrong, and Luke Besson's first movie in years since the rape charges against him were dropped. I'm Christopher Zweig, let's take a look. This time we have Godzilla battling monsters in Rome and sleeping in the Colosseum, while Kong is trying to find more giant apes of his kind, and he finds a hidden tribe of them. One of them is a little red ape who becomes his new friend, and one of them is their leader who plans to destroy the fabric of all realities, and he's known as Scar King. <laughs> Returning actors consist of Rebecca Hall, Kaylee Hoddle, and Brian Tyree Henry, and joining the cast is Dan Stevens as a vet who was a British cross between Ace Ventura and Peter Quill. Just try not to swallow your tongue. What? There are colorful visuals from time to time like how Godzilla can now light up magenta, and I like the performances from Steven and Hoddle, but Godzilla and Kong the New Empire didn't work for me. I got bored by the special effects, fighting, and fast talking. It's basically the same problems we've seen in the franchise and many other franchises. Godzilla Minus One, however, is the better recent Godzilla movie for obvious reasons, one of them being that it was more thrilling and emotional than this one is. Godzilla and Kong may work as campy entertainment for you, but I'll save my likes for better movies, so skip it. Our next movie is Sleeping Dogs, another crime drama this month with a top actor suffering from a memory condition after Michael Keaton and Knox goes away. This time we have Russell Crowe as a former detective suffering from Alzheimer's but getting the right medical treatment. He returns to an old case in which a college professor gets murdered and the accused is sentenced to death. Tell me how it really went down. I ain't no killer. Make it right or I'm dead. He tells me he didn't do it. And we also have Karen Gillum as a former student turned writer who had an affair with the dead professor played by Martin Sakokis. Sleeping Dogs has Crow adjusting to the character delicately and acknowledging his illness, which seems to be getting better based on his medication. He tries to overcome the screenplay and direction, but the movie doesn't justify the actor's skills. It has too many formulas, half of them are predictable and half of them are interesting. There's no mystery to solve here except to find another murder mystery that actually tests your mind. Next up, Late Night with the Devil, which plays like a found footage movie, but also proves to be a lot more than that in the late night movie genre. David Dust Malkian plays a talk show host named Jack Delroy, whose show in the late 70s can't top the ratings of Johnny Carson. He needs to pull off a Halloween special, which would take television to unprecedented new heights. To host a national syndicated talk show. And I'm trying to help you keep it on the air. We all know how important it is to keep our sponsors and affiliates happy, but in my humble opinion, there is only one person who really matters in this whole darn crazy business, and that is you, our viewer. Now, as you know, here on Night Owls, we think it's very important to keep an open mind. Among the guests on the show is a young girl played by Ingrid Torelli who survived a satanic cult suicide, and her parapsychologist, Laura Gordon, wrote a book about it and based her on it. She makes contact with the devil possessing her. Lily, can you hear me? <laughs> Good to see you again, Jack. Lily, return to me. Late Night with the Devil was written, edited, and directed by the Australian siblings Colin and Cameron Keynes, who both have what it takes to enter the horror genre. I like the way the televised conversations are filmed in color while it's black and white during commercial break, and unlike Immaculate, another horror film released by an independent studio, this one succumbs to no cliches and rips off nothing shamelessly. This is a smart movie about a satanic spin on a talk show. Next up, in the land of saints and sinners, and unlike a lot of Liam Neeson's movies lately, this one is fresh entertainment, especially when it plays like a western on an Ireland coast and has Irish actors playing their characters with courage. Neeson plays a former assassin who decides to live out his golden years in peace, only to return to the game when he meets a little girl who is abused by a man from an RIA terrorist group. He and a young man played by Jack Leeson both take out that crazy man, but the sister of that crazy man played by Carrie Condon finds out about his death and wants revenge. Finbar Murphy has done something unforgivable. You can give him a message. We'll tear right through this godforsaken place. Finbar, what is it that you did? Uh, I lost track long ago. A saint's gotta be a sinner first, Tony. I may not understand everything going on in the land of saints and sinners, but it's about damn time we get a new Liam Neeson movie that is actually smart actually provocative and actually entertaining. 
It also features characters who have their own ambitions and an old-fashioned tone of both the Western and Ireland homeland genres. Director Robert Lorenz, who has collaborated with Clint Eastwood, uses the right direction to show us how these people tick and what distinguishes saints from sinners. Sometimes they can overshadow one another, but we have patience in examining them. And our last movie is Dog Man, Luc Besson's first movie in years since the rape charges against him were dropped. It's all over the place with sinister or twisted characters and a bunch of dogs who seem smarter than the screenplay gives them credit for. Caleb Landry Jones plays a drag queen and dog lover who connects with dogs enough for them to act like his personal assistants and gangsters who pull off jewelry heists from rich homes. He gets arrested after a gang war and admits his life story of how he was abused by his family and how he fell in love with dogs and acting. When Kyle takes affection where he can get it. They're my babies. As far as I can tell, they only have one flaw. They trust humans. As I'm watching Dog Man, I was concerned that the dogs would resort to crap jokes when they break into wealthy homes, but they're a lot smarter than that. If only the overall movie was as exhilarating as it disguises itself to be. The characters are cliched and superficial, and sometimes they have to make poor decisions, and if it was a best-song movie, then it should have taken the genre to new heights. It holds itself back from what could have been an instant classic, and not even Jones, who is better in three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, could shake things up. To recap this week's new movies, thumbs down for Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. Thumbs down for Sleeping Dogs, thumbs way up for Late Night with the Devil, thumbs way up for In the Land of Saints and Sinners, and thumbs down for Dogman. Well, those are the new movies I'm reviewing this week. I'm Christopher Zweig. Happy Easter, stay safe, and I'll see you at the movies. For more amazing content, please like and subscribe to my channels, and please read my reviews at cjatthemovies.com and download the new HD Radio app.